Okay, uh, well, last night and this morning, I spent about six hours uh, altogether playing Kerbal and recording and editing a video which had, as it turned out, several of the wrong bits clipped into it and uh, no audio at all, just, you know, about an hour and a half of me in the top corner here talking and uh, no sound coming out of my mouth at all. So that's fucking irritating, and I've decided instead to just do a quick speed run Kerbal Space Program to the moon and hopefully back. Uh, and I've got a bourbon and coke. Uh, so this ought to go super fucking well. Judgy, not. It's all we had in the house. Hmm. Oh, yeah. This is going to go great. So, Kerbal Space Program, let's do this uh, nice and quick. I'm going to try and just record this all in one take and let's just, let's see where we get to. Uh, Kerbal Space Program is a fantastic game. It is Lego uh, with little green men and you can blow stuff up and put things in space. I mean, what more could you want? I've got things going on in my science game that I will talk about some other time, but let's just deal with, uh, let's just uh, build a rocket and, and head, head out. Um, we'll see if we can get out to Kerbin's moon. Um, the moon is actually... So a lot of people, uh, when they first play this game, they, they do find it kind of difficult to get off the ground, literally, and that's that's something we're going to address. Um, but also the next best thing they try and do is go to the moon, obviously. Uh, Kerbin, uh, the planet, actually has two moons. Um, it has uh, one here, the moon, and it also has another one out here called Minmus, which is actually, bizarrely, much easier to get to. Um, thanks, Jeb. Uh, so, despite being further away, it's much easier to get to and get back from. It's got very, very, very low gravity. You can basically, like, jump there. Um, so, we will, well, depending on what we want to do, we'll, we might go to Minmus instead of the moon. Um, it's a bit easier. Uh, but first of all, let's build ourselves a rocket. So we're going to go to the VAB. This is going to be a bit of a speed run. Um, there are people out there on YouTube who do how to play Kerbal Space Program videos. Um, there's been a lot of versions of this game. It keeps updating. So I've got tons and tons and tons of mods also. Um, so a lot of this stuff is not in the base game. But we are going to start by building a capsule. We're going to build... Um, let's take this one. Uh, I think we, we're going to try and take uh, this fella here. Um, or do we want to try this one? Uh, yeah, let's let's go small. Let's try and take uh, let's try and take this fella here. And basically, I think what we're going to try and do with this guy today is we'll get him to orbit. We'll try and get him uh, maybe up to the moon. Maybe let's see if we can get to the moon and back. We'll give it a try. Um, so let's pop on. Okay, what I'm going to do, I think, is just. Um, probably speed build this and fast forward it and we'll talk a little bit about what we've got going on here um, but really this is how we how you, how you do it together okay right quick pause for libations mm. oh limey all right now we want to uh, to get some dudes, uh, and we want to get them going all the way. Well, we want to get them into space. We'll we'll say a moonshot might be a little bit tricky, but we'll we'll do what we can. So we're going to start with a pod, and that's a pod that can contain uh, three people, three little dudes. So we'll start there, and we first of all, this pod is going to be the only thing that goes all the way to the moon and all the way back. So this is the last thing that's going to come all the way back, and it's got to land back on this planet. So to do that, it needs a couple of basic things. It needs a thermal shield, a heat shield, which is going to go there, and it needs a parachute, because otherwise it would come back very, very fast and pancake our dudes. So we're going to go find us a parachute, like that, that one there. Fantastic. Last thing that needs to go on this capsule, I think, is we'll stick an antenna on there. Lovely. And we're going to move the antenna about a bit so that it fits into the form factor. Uh, there you go. Keeps it a bit aerodynamic. Right, magic. There's our boy, there's our capsule, and we're going to start, and we're going to call this one Moonshot 1. Oh, save, right, cool. 
Uh, so the next part we're going to need for this capsule is uh, some sort of landing ability, some sort of something that can get us uh, down to the planet. Um, so first of all we're going to need something that will detach the rest of the rocket uh, and that's called a decoupler. And it looks like that. And then we need to get uh, something that's going to land us on the, on the planet. Uh, we are going to need the body of this to be a lander. So we're going to grab a... Hmm, how are we going to do this? Pause for thought. Ta-da! So, pause, pause for libations, pause for thought, pause for about 20 minutes and design this thing. And, you know, rockets look how they look. There's, there's, a, there's a limit to the amount you can do with that, but... Anything that might be considered... Oh, my bread's ready. Uh, anything that might be considered uh, fallacious in this is entirely uh, in your own imagination. So what I've tried to make here is something that will land safely on the moon and maybe even come back. These two engines here by the side are liquid fuel, uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer powered, and they will, in theory, uh, help us slow down enough to land on the moon, uh, maybe even get there. And... One thing we do need to do is make sure there is a fuel line between the main ship and these engines, because I think the thing they're attached with... Ah, there we go, enable crossfeed. That means that uh, fuel will be able to flow through the hard point into these engines as well, which is good, because there's a whole bunch of fuel in here. There is a whole bunch of oxidizer, liquid fuel, and monoprop. So oxidizer and liquid fuel are what most of the rocket engines run on, and uh, monopropellant, which is also what's in these tanks I've stashed inside here, is the thing that usually just is used to uh, control the attitude of a spaceship. You've seen, if you've ever seen a sci-fi movie, uh, you, you know, you've seen a spaceship puffing out little uh, little puffs of, of white st white smoke to uh, move itself around. That's what monopropellant is. It's uh, otherwise known as reaction control thrusting. Um, but there's also a couple of engines you can use uh, made uh, to use monoprop as well, and that's what I've got here. This is actually quite a powerful engine despite its size, so this is actually going to do an awful lot of the work for us. Um, so, we're going to close up this. Uh, I kind of skipped forward building the lander just because uh, it requires a lot of thought, it requires a lot of kind of dicking about, and um, I didn't really have a plan in mind, so got got something together now. It's very basic. It's not going to do anything other than get there and get back. I haven't put any science or any experiments on it. I probably could do and I may well do. There's a couple of other things every ship needs, so we're going to need some power, some electricity. Actually, that is a thing I can put inside here, is I need to uh, put, a, put a battery or two. So we're going to grab a battery from here. Again, I've got a lot of mods in this game, uh, and that means there are there are a bunch of things in here that are just aren't in the normal game. Don't worry too much about them. So we'll see if we can wedge a couple of batteries in there. Um, it's a little bit of a ropey, uh, ropey system, this, but never mind. In fact, I think what we're going to do... Yeah, this is a little bit... Uh, we'll just put it there. One there, one there. Mm, yeah, fair enough. It's a little bit unbalanced. Let's, uh, let's do another one as if we need that much electric charge. So one of the things, unfortunately, I do uh, with this game is massively over-engineer everything. This has got way more battery power than it will ever need, um, but mostly for the reasons of balancing the craft out and, and you know, looking looking pretty. Um, the other thing we're going to do is stick some, uh, some solar panels on here. So when those extend out, those will give us some, some solar power for the ship. Uh, cool. So that's our lander, and We've got Lando, I think we've got communications, we've got uh, thermal, we've got... Yep, yep, yep. I think we're pretty well sorted on the lander front, so what we're going to do now is add a decoupler. Uh, that is a thing that will break this off from the rest of the ship. That's the uh, same thing we've got up there. Add another one there, and underneath this we're going to build the second stage of the rocket. Um, these sticking off the side is a little bit irritating. It's going to be... Uh, Gonna make this a little bit tricky to maneuver. Um, could kind of do without it, honestly, but so it goes. So it goes. Right. Let's get us a rocket underneath this. Fuel tanks. OK, 
Okay, so what we're going to do for this second stage, because of this slightly funny shape of this uh, of this lander, um, we're going to put some fuel and an engine for the second part. Uh, another thing we're also going to put here, just quickly, is a big reaction control thruster. A uh, reaction control wheel, I should say. What this does is keep the rocket steady, and this is going to be really important because things here are going to be a little bit messed up. Uh, the reason for that is this. We're going to pop another decoupler underneath the second stage. This is just, again, this is real simple. It's a can of can of fuel, two cans of fuel actually, and a small engine, uh, the poodle engine. And then we're going to stick another decoupler on. Where is it? There it is. And under that we're going to stick a fairing. The fairing is going to do something that we need right now, which is to make this aerodynamic. Because we've got to get around the fact that this uh, slightly, um, slightly sort of fallacious thing is is kind of getting in the way uh, and is not gonna not gonna go up super well um, so we're gonna place a cross section there and we're going to try and there we go. so we've made this into a uh, into a fairing into a kind of a big old big old arrowhead on the top of this uh, the top of the ship and now we've got to it's gonna be hell to fly I gotta tell you this is not gonna work out super well at all but we'll give it a try one thing I'm going to do quickly is uh, turn this sideways. So that'll the reason for that will become clear. Um, oh, actually, do I want to do that? That's the hatch. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. It, it's going to make some slightly weird landing, but whatever. It'll be fine. Um, he says. Okay, let's stick a main stage on here. Okay, basically what we're going to do is put a giant can of boom underneath, and we have uh, what are we? We're about the so the top top two stages about thirty odd tons, thirty five tons. So that's not too bad. We're just going to stick a big can of boom underneath, uh, and another one there. And um, I well, the one I did this morning I massively over engineered, and I'm going to do the same for this. It does not need probably this much uh, engine or fuel or anything like it. But we're gonna take it anyway. Um, we're gonna do it anyway. We are going to put a big fat mainsail engine underneath that, and then we're also going to stick some boosters on the side. We're gonna grab what are we? We're gonna have a radial decoupler, so we're gonna put a couple of boosters on here. Uh, and I think what we're gonna do is do so. There's there's something. You first of all, you can either just have. Uh, for, 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 for additional power, if you think about the space shuttle, um, when you think about the, the classic uh, picture of the space shuttle, you've got the, the plane itself, the space plane itself, the big orange tank, which is roughly what this is. In fact, we can even we can even make it an orange tank if we want to. Big orange tank, and the, the two white tanks at the side. Now, the two white tanks at the side are rocket boosters. They are solid rocket fuel boosters. Once these ignite, they don't stop firing until they're done. So these are kind of ridiculously overpowered. They will they will take us more than enough of the way to space. Uh, we don't really need them. We can use these ones, which are nope, those are huge, those are needlessly big. Um, they're also massive. We want anything a little bit more. Hey, those look a bit more like it. Those look a little bit more uh, a little bit more sensible. All right. So what we're going to do is pop those on the side, and we're going to do that properly so that they are actually in a good configuration. There we go. Uh, those look pretty, pretty enormous, pretty massive. Uh, those should, those should do us pretty good. What we're going to do is put some parachutes on the top of those as well, because when they uh, detach and go back to Earth, if they've got parachutes on them, I have a mod called Stage Recovery that will uh, collect them again. And what that means is essentially some of the cost of this rocket gets recovered. We're playing in sandbox mode. Cost doesn't mean anything. I could stick one of these inflatable habitations on here. It wouldn't fly at all, but it wouldn't matter in terms of the cost. Um, this part is also going to fall back to Earth, so what we might do is stick a couple of uh, radial parachutes on this as well. And again, if it's got a parachute, automatically this mod will fire the parachute and try and rescue the, the booster uh, automatically. All that means is if it's falling slowly enough by the time it hits the ground, then we'll recover it. So, okay, we've got our lander up there, we've got a second stage, we've got a first stage, and a bunch of boosters. The uh, last thing I'm going to do is pop a little bit of uh, aerodynamic control on there, which is to say these winglets, and those are going to help us steer the rocket. Um, now, I've built the rocket the way I have for a particular reason. This 
pod is facing the, with the door facing towards the camera, um, when you fire it, when you launch it, you want to be turning to the right. You want to be using the D key of the WASD controls um, to turn towards the 90 degree mark on your navigation ball, which you'll see in a sec. But what that means is this whole rocket is going to be going right. It's going to be going this way, um, which you can't see because I realize the cursor isn't on, but it's going to be going uh, over here. So we're going to be turning right when we when we launch off the launch pad, and the reason we're doing that is we're going to go along the the curve of the uh, curve of the equator uh, with the direction of spin of the planet, and this rocket needs to be balanced in such a way that by turning this way and firing at the same time, it doesn't cause aerodynamic stress to the rocket. So that's the reason why I've put these boosters as they are like this, and not where the flat where the uh, the winglets are. These are for control and these will be providing us kind of an even firing profile. I guess I'm not an aerospace engineer, I'm just, I've done a lot of this before, so let's give this a try. Uh, last thing we're going to need is a gantry for this and we're just going to pop those there. So the last thing to do, last thing, I keep saying last thing, first of all we're going to check crew. Uh, we've got some crew up here. Let's take a pilot who has been before, Valentina, a scientist and an engineer. Um, I'll worry about, I don't think we've got any useful uh, action groups we need to do. Action groups are a useful thing, you can you can uh, program parts of your ship. So what I'm just going to do is set the uh, set the solar panels on my lander to go with uh, the button 1. Uh, actually no, I'm going to set those to be button 3 because I've got a couple of different engines here, so let's make Let's make our rocket engines on the lander. Let's make them number two. And then our orbital maneuvering engine can be number one. So we'll use one, two to change engines and three to, uh, to move the solar panels around. Um, yeah, last thing we're going to do is before launch is check your staging. Make sure, I can't do Scott Manley's accent, but check your staging. Make sure everything's going to fire at the right time you want it to fire. For example, if we press space first of all, the gantries are going to fire and then the boosters are going to go. That's no good. So uh, parachutes we definitely don't want firing off just yet. So to put our gantry and our boosters and our main engine all in the first stage here. This stage is going to be uh, detaching the boosters and I'll sort the rest of the staging out and meet you on the launch pad. How about that? Oh. So, having dispensed pastry making advice to my mother, I'm now uh, ready to launch. So what the staging effectively means is what things fire at what time. So I've got it down to a, sh a shorter number of stages now and it means that all of our boosters and our gantry are going to fire at the same time. And as I said earlier, we want to be firing towards the uh, towards the 90 degree vector. We want to be turning right when we leave the planet, functionally. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, launch in a sec. We're going to throttle up here. Up goes the throttle. We have stability assist, SAS, stability assist on. And we are going to launch in 5-4 now. There we go, full throttle. Up we go. So this is your alt altitude meter, altimeter, thing you want and those are your fuel gauges going down so all the solid fuels are these boosters and that liquid fuel there is uh, this fella here what about 600 meters this is struggling a little bit actually this could could get a bit tricky it's very top heavy this is not a good rocket design if anybody uh, in aerospace in boeing or wherever suggested this um i think they'd probably be laughed at uh this is a bit unfortunate as well these boosters have a lot of fuel more fuel in fact than the main engine does so I might throttle down the main engine a bit and let the uh, let the uh, the boosters do the work. But what I'm doing here very steadily is just tapping the D key every now and then, just moving it slowly over. This moving this green circle. This is called the prograde vector. This this shows where you're going and the direction you're going. Um, moving it slowly over to the 90 degree mark on there. So it's this is 45 degree angle along a 90 degree vector, what that means in terms of the planet is you're going like that. And this is your apoapse, this is the highest point in your altitude. So if you stopped firing the engine now, you reach a height of 38,000 meters and then you come back to Earth. But we're going to keep on going. This is actually working out pretty well. For a horribly top-heavy and weirdly shaped rocket, it's going okay. 
So once we get out of the atmosphere at this mark here, 70,000 meters, where, where our apparatus is now outside atmosphere, we're going to raise it to 100, and we're going to kill the engines, and it's not going to matter because all of our fuel boosters are still going. Um, okay, so you know, sometimes you fuck up. Uh, this is going to be this is going to be kind of a hard one. Uh, there we go. There's our boosters gone. Interesting. There they go. Okay, so we've spun our rocket around for no particularly good reason. Um, our boosters are now going to float off into into space, and uh, we have still some fuel to go. All right. So the way you get to orbit, and we're going to pretend that this is all fine and is going to work. The way you get to orbit in this game is by pointing yourself along that vector, getting out uh, that forty-five degree, ninety angle. This is the curve. This is the the way the planet spins. This is the way to fire your rocket to go off to get into orbit the easiest. You can go other way. You can go the other direction from the space center. Uh, it just means you're fighting against the planet's spin. Anyway. Once you've got there, once you're in space, which we are now, we are now in space, we are above the atmospheric thing. Uh, once you're in space, you go to the highest point of your orbit and then you burn again in the direction of the orbit to establish, uh, sorry, in the direction you're going to establish an orbit. All an orbit is, is going, is falling forward faster than you are falling downwards. Um, so we would use this maneuver node and we pull the prograde direction out. You can see now we have a periapsis, that means the lowest point of our orbit. Before we didn't have that because the lowest point of our orbit was going to be pancaked on the ground. Uh, but now we have a periapsis, and if you right click on it, it gets, you can uh, keep it on the screen. And there would be roughly a circular orbit, right? 198 at the height and 195 at the lowest. So that's an orbital maneuver that we've just built. That's a circularization maneuver. Um, if you don't feel comfortable or happy doing that, you don't have to. This is a very basic one. I know how to do them roughly. There is a mod called MechJeb, and it is the best. And you can just say, MechJeb, plan me a maneuver to circularize my orbit at the next apoapsis. Create node, create and execute, and it'll do it for you. I'm going to freeball at this one. Uh, freeball? Is that a word? It is now. I'm going to freeball this one, uh, and we're going to see what, where we can get with the last of our fuel from here and the fuel from out of here. I'm just going to deploy this fairing uh, because we're going to want to do some stuff. Okay, let's try and get ourselves aligned with this target. Now it's a burn time of one minute and twenty-three seconds. That'll change as soon as we detach the back end of this. Um, but for the moment, we're going to assume that we want to to, to do this burn time of of uh, 83 seconds and therefore what we want to do is start burning 40 seconds or thereabouts before the node before the the node time we've chosen and keep burning for another 40 seconds after it so we spread that 80 seconds out either side of the node there are probably physicists who can explain this much better or rocket scientists or all sorts of people but there it is uh, i've stuck rcs on the only rcs we have on this lander is is uh, which might prove to be a problem now i think about it is uh, is on the capsule um but for the moment uh, we just need it to keep keep us lined up with this target and then once we get to the 80 second mark which is not quite there the 40 second mark we're going to start firing as i said i expect that total that total burn time to change once we're not carrying this much weight um which will be quite quickly but we'll start off at the right node time anyway and we'll see what we get to. There we go. Okay, yeah, so it changed a little bit, but not too badly. We're going to uh, continue burning along this line, aiming right at the target. And what that's doing is spreading out our orbit very slowly. Obviously, in charge of a spaceship, not allowed to be drinking, but Kerbals don't give a shit. They're little green men, they do whatever they want. 
This is inside the cockpit. I don't care. Look at Valentina. She's happy as Larry. At least we should keep an eye on where we're actually going, huh? We've got to keep aiming right here at this blue target, making sure that we're uh, facing the right way. Burn, burn, burn. Uh, let's make sure we're not draining any of our lander's fuel. No, we're not good. Okay, there we go. We've got a periapsis, so we're not going to crash back into the planet just yet. That's great. So now, let's stop. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. Okay, we've gone a little bit far. How are we doing? 206, 196. Okay, there's about 10,000 meters difference in our... Uh, in our orbit, but we've got a ton of fuel left, so let's do something about it. Let's just burn very, very gently. And we want to get that down to zero, get ourselves a nice stable orbit. Okay, that'll do. So we've got a pretty stable orbit there. 200193, all right, that's fine. Lovely. Okay, so now we are in orbit. We're going to uh, time warp around until we are in some sunlight because it makes life a lot easier for me in terms of video making if I can actually see what I'm doing. And because you get a lovely view of the planet, look at that. Actually, I really like that. It really shows you something about space. You zoomed in here, you think, oh wow, look at that planet, it's absolutely enormous, let's zoom out. Oh god, no, that really is very, very big. We are absolutely tiny. We are completely minute. And that planet just goes on forever. And it's about one-sixth the scale of Earth, so there you go. Alright, anyway, philosophical musing aside, here's our boy. Uh, we've still got about half the fuel left in our second stage. As I said, I've massively over-engineered this rocket. It does not need to be this, uh, to have this much fuel or the rest of it, but... We're going to see what we can do. We're going to see if we can get to the moon. There's our boy, the moon. So what we want to do is be going... Uh, actually, this is pretty good. Um, this is going to be... What I'm going to do here, uh, I could... Well, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and eyeball it, see how far we get, and then I'm going to use Mac Jeb to do the dirty work. But if we've got the moon there, we want to be burning roughly, I would say, here, to be going out to uh, about over here. Well, you can't see. Um but like this. Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. Now we have an encounter with the moon, and that would be how close we're going to get to the moon. The moon periapsis is how close we're going to get to the moon. So we want to adjust until we get real close. Hmm, that'll do. Uh, and of course, being that close, we'll be going pretty fast as well, and we would therefore be skipping past the moon. What this uh, represents, this kind of orange bit here, uh, is our approach. It's when we've uh, left the sphere of influence of Kerbin, and we're going to be approaching the moon. And then this purple part is where we will be affected by the gravity of the moon. And that's our chance to get captured by the moon uh, and get into orbit around the moon. So let's do that. Let's do a pretty rough and ready burn. There could we could probably uh, fine tune this for some some better delta v, but um, actually maybe we can a little bit. Let's, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment here. See if we can see if we can drop this number by about a hundred or so. And because uh, that's how much fuel I've got in my second stage, 934 meters per second of of it's called delta v. It basically how much boom you got for your buck. Like that's it. Let's not get complicated. And this transaction would take me 784 of my 934. So I would need uh, a fair bit to slow down. I'm still going to need a fair bit to slow down and, and chill out around the moon. So I'm just going to do some adjustments here. Um, Help by my friend uh, Mr. Bullet, and uh, be right back. Okay, so we've brought ourselves into uh, an orbit around the moon, and we've got. Well, we're going to crash, functionally. That's where we're at. We're going to crash. But it's okay. We, we've, we're crashing with plenty of fuel. Um, the, reason we've, the reason I've done this, by the way, we did have a good, I did have a good uh, circular orbit around the moon just now, but I realized the recording was paused for quite a lot of the time, and I don't know uh, where we've got to. I'm not sure what the last thing recorded was, so we'll see. Um, this could be good. Uh, but, yeah, we're coming in close on the moon now, and um, what I've done is gotten my orbit to a point where... I've lowered the trajectory. I've burned. I've burned to slow myself down to the point that uh, if I keep moving on this way, I'm just going to 
gently and uh, sort of quite cautiously and carefully pancake myself across the lunar surface uh, and that's not really what we want to be doing but as we move over the moon uh, over the moon surface I'm just gonna I'm just gonna point us in the right direction for the moment and uh, make it look as if we know what we're doing piloting this correctly yeah as we move over the lunar surface get a nice little view of the galaxy here. We're coming in quite low over the edge of a crater. So what's going to happen here is we're going to skim the edge of this crater and I'm, I'm concerned. Oh, yeah, I think that's going to, what that's going to do is that's going to impact us. So what we want to do at this moment in time is point the ship retrograde and we're moving really fast. We're moving, you know, this is sort of seat of the pants flying a little bit. So we're going to, we're just going to level out and then we're going to burn for all we're worth with these liquid fuel engines and that's going to hopefully slow us right right down it's going to hopefully bring us in on a nice slow trajectory hopefully 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 and not uh, it's going to slow us down enough that we don't burn our way through this but what we might need to do is add the extra kick from the other engine so I'm just going to switch it on and that's helped us a lot that's going to slow us down quite a lot so we're going to burn. This is, this is, yeah, this is a little bit, a little bit controversial, a little bit uh, tricky here. We're going to burn quite a lot of fuel just doing this, but we've slowed down a lot in the last few minutes, so that's good. Last few seconds. Okay, I've switched off that engine. These are very efficient engines, and I've switched off everything. The reason I've switched off everything is we're now down at a much, much slower speed. So this is good. Uh, what we're going to do now is just. Uh, drift for a while. We're going to pop our engines back on. Throttle down. We've taken away our solar panels and we're going to extend our landing gear. And we're going to burn at a low rate because what we want to do is simply stop this getting any faster. It's going a little bit, but we're going to slow it down. We're just moving gently in towards the surface now. And we want to slow it down to about 10 meters per second to start with as we get close we ideally want to be going at about six meters per second by the time we hit the surface but the slower you're going the easier it is to slow down so That was not what I would call a particularly um, elegant or excellent piece of flying. Uh, I'm going to find out in a minute how much of the recording I've lost uh, just by having it paused and not noticing. Um, we're going to see where I paused it. I don't remember at this point. Um, it could be back on a back on the planet, um, but we'll see. Uh, but we've got there. We've got there to uh, to the moon. We've landed. I'm going to switch the engines off. That was a noise, and we are going to. You know, we made it. I'll turn that off. We've uh, we've landed there on the, the surface of the moon. I think we'll have uh, Valentina. Valentina, I think, is going to stay in the craft. The only reason for that is because if she leaves the craft, uh, the stability assist will turn off, and this whole thing will probably fall over because we landed on a slope. So Bob is going to be the guy who gets to go outside and uh, and see what's what here on the moon. There we go. There's... Bob Kerman looking extremely pretty stoic, actually, to be on the moon. Honestly, I would have thought that first Kerman on the moon, he would have been uh, be a little bit more more cheery about it. But anyway, um, there are various things you can do once you get to somewhere. And if I brought science experiments to lay out, I could, I could. Um, set up a few science experiments that I could leave here and they would transmit science occasionally or I could come back and collect science from them. Uh, if I brought science, science experiments attached to the ship I could collect science from them again or do various other things. As it is, not a whole lot, we're just going to get Bob to uh, take a surface sample. There's no science data for this, no uh, 
uh, science reward for this because I'm playing in sandbox mode, so there's no, there's nothing, nothing to collect. Anyway, keep experiment. Um, and the other thing Bob can do is do an EVA report, so a report, a crew report from outside the ship. Uh, and there he is. And I guess we could also plant a flag and say, we were here. You know, we came, we saw, we sort of looked around a bit and went, huh. Marvellous. So there we go, we got to the moon, let's see if we can get home. Nice quick speed run, let's see if we can do it. So I'm just going to get Bob to uh, just jetpack his way up there quickly, a bit easier. And board. Okay, now where we want to go is uh, to get back to the planet, if I'm remembering correctly, we want to fa fire off and go this way. We want to go um, to the to the to the right of the screen. Uh, again, you know, I forgot about the cursor. We want to be going towards the right of the screen. That's going to get us back onto the right path towards Kerbin. I might be totally wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case, and I'm pretty sure the direction of that is uh, that way. Yeah. So. Basically, let's go. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, that way. So I'm just going to try and slightly manually drag this green green circle back up onto the 90 degree line and then we're gonna aim along it and we're gonna try and get ourselves into some sort of orbit or even just escape the moon entirely could could work could be bad we'll see So uh, again, I'm kind of doing this seat of the pants style. This this is not how anybody in NASA would be planning a mission. They would be aghast at the idea that you just burn off the moon and you know point in the right direction and hope. But uh, you know, let's see what we can do. Which might go terribly wrong and uh, end up with me wanging off into space forever. Oh, there we go. We've got a capture burn around the planet. Good, and there's our periaps. So if we keep going like this, we're going to lower our periaps uh, around Kerbin. That's going to mean that we come in closer to Kerbin. And once we do, we should be able to hopefully um, slow down enough to stop. <laughs> uh, slow down enough to uh, to land if we're, if we're, if we're very lucky. Um, so I'm just trying to lower this number to uh, this, this sort of moving number here. The periaps the lowest point of my orbit with Kerbin now. I'm trying to lower it to a number that I like, uh, a number somewhere sub 100,000 would be great, but about 100,000 is fine, then we can get a capture, we can get an orbit from there. Uh, that'll do. Cool, so that's just above the atmosphere, so once we get to uh, Kerbin, we can slow ourselves down even more, bring our apoapsis down, the highest point of our orbit, and uh, then basically start start lowering ourselves into the atmosphere and slowing right down. I'm going to skip an awful lot of that, try and remember to start recording again when it's time to enter the atmosphere. So a little bit of fast forwarding of time. As we very, very quickly move in towards the planet and our lowest uh, point of orbit. I think we should probably have brought our solar panels out again because I think we might be out of electric charge. Ooh, very close. Oh dear. 
yeah thankfully we've got our uh, we've run out of electric charge but we have got our solar panels out in time that's good you can you can be in a bit of a tricky situation where you can't open your solar panels to get more electricity because you don't have the electricity to do it uh, we'll save the rest of the monopropellant we've got for maneuvering if we need to do it so we just have a little bit of liquid fuel and oxidizer left to try and slow ourselves down and hopefully even reduce our orbit to the point that we can land so let's see what we can do if we want to slow ourselves yeah so if we want to slow ourselves down uh, to get out of orbit we need way 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 more fuel than we've got that's not going to work we've come in really fast it's uh, it's going to be a bad time so let's try and do this <laughs> there's no way this can go horribly horribly wrong what we're going to try and do is um, adjust our orbit now so that instead of going to a lowest point of 78,000 meters and then going back out to the moon again we lower our orbit to uh, aero break through the atmosphere now this would be something that you do you drop your orbit maybe just below the atmospheric levels maybe at about 65,000 you drop your orbit below below atmosphere and you'd scrape the top of the atmosphere and by doing so you'd slow yourself down that this apoapsis would also drop uh, and it would drop a little bit a little bit a little bit at a time uh, and eventually you'd be back in a in a sort of um, circular circular orbit uh, like this if you if you were to do it would be bad it would be bad times so we're not going to do that what we're going to do is um, essentially come in off the atmosphere as fast as we can and um, try not to die but basically yeah, I'm going to use all the fuel I've got left to slow myself down to the point where hopefully I will be scraping through the atmosphere um, and by doing so will uh, will that be easier it's not going to be easier it's, it's going to be bad whatever happens so functionally I'm just going to burn retrograde and hope for the best uh, and hope that we don't you know die too bad uh, it, it's probably not going to go great honestly but so it goes this is how the game works often the time you get to uh, get to here and find out you can't actually get get them all the way home and that's uh, that's what you start a rescue mission for but we're going to burn retrograde we're going to try and slow ourselves down slower decay our orbit this is now well below the atmosphere and if we burn it enough we might even get to the point where uh, we are intended to crash. Perfect. So this is now going to skim in uh, and slow it down, slow it, slow right down. Um, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's probably not going to work, but let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Oh boy. I feel bad for Valentina and Bob. I don't, I don't think this is necessarily going to go their way today. But uh, anyway, we're pretty low down. We're pretty slow. Uh, we're not that slow. We're, we're going real fast. We're going about 3,000 meters a second. And we've just entered the atmosphere. So I'm just going to burn off uh, the remainder of the fuel. And then we're going to detach the rest of the craft. And we're going to hope, like hell, that our... Um, burn that engine as well. We're going to hope like hell that the uh, heat shield is going to hold up. Oh, that's not good. That's real bad. Oh yeah, there's the antenna. And I've detached the other half of the craft, uh, <laughs> which is by, uh, and we're just going to, we're just going to hope, we're just going to hope. Our heat shield is holding up, and we're just going to have to hope that we slow down enough uh, from from 3,000 meters per second to uh, to under six by the time we by the time this number reaches zero um, at the top of the screen, this altimeter. So, uh, Valentina, Bob, it's been a pleasure. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, we're slowing down pretty fast. The G forces are high. Uh, you can see them over here on the on the right hand side of the nav. All the G forces are pretty high. We're slowing down at quite a rate, but we've made it to an extent. We've made it. We've slowed down some. It's about we're about sixteen thousand meters. We've slowed down uh, to to you know six hundred thousand meters, six hundred meters per second. We're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Uh, there's absolutely no way they would have survived that in real life. Valentina and Bob, I'm afraid, would be uh, would be kind of uh, cooked. But it's all right. That's fine. 
Okay, we've slowed down to a pretty reasonable extent now, to 273 minutes per second, that's, I mean, don't get me wrong, that's real fast. Uh, I don't know what that is in miles per hour, but it's not its not a number you'd want to be doing. And we are falling, free-falling quite quickly, but we do have a parachute. You know, that's an important thing. Uh, and we've not, I think we've reached terminal velocity, we're not going any, we're not going to be going any faster, we're still slowing down. Uh, we're landing on land, not in water, which is nice. Um, and, you know, I'm going to open the parachute soon. Uh, and we're going to hopefully coast to a nice, gentle descent in a way that we definitely wouldn't have been able to do if this was actual people and the Earth, but it's fine, it's game. There goes our parachute, yanking us down to a respectable 10 meters per second. That sound you just heard was the rest of the craft um, going nuclear as it hit the ground and probably tore up a huge uh, huge tracts of land for miles around, but luckily nobody lives on this planet apart from the space people. Uh, there's the Kerbal Space Center, nobody lives here. Uh, so we're just going to speed up. This this uh, time only goes so fast when you're down on the planet, but physics also happens at the same time. Uh, so we're just going to... There goes a the heat shield, but we survived! <laughs> Valentina, hop out, enjoy. Take off your, uh, take off your helmet and, uh, and enjoy. There you go. We survived that particular, uh, that particular jaunt. So there you go. That's a bit of Kerbal Space Program. That's a quick run to the moon and back. Uh, I'll see what I can edit this down to for for content length, but roughly that's what we've got. Um, so that's a bit of Kerbal. It's free. Uh, it's free today, the 29th of March. It's free tomorrow, the 30th of March. It's also uh, very cheap on Steam right now. By the way, it's free on Steam and it's it's cheap on Steam. Uh, I would strongly recommend getting it. Just you, the things you can do with this game are absolutely ridiculous. Um, just as a very quick example, you can also fly planes and do all sorts of ridiculous nonsense like that. I'm just going to. Uh, I'm not going to build a plane. I'm going to open up one of the pre-made stock examples, the Ares 4A, for example, and um, we're just going to launch that. That sort of looks like a rocket plane of sorts. So you can do all sorts of stuff with this game. The very basics are rockets and space planes, but once you uh, once you start sort of um, thinking about it, you can you can build absolutely just just about anything at all. Um, there's all of my uh, that's my jet engines going off. You can build more or less anything with this. Uh, I I particularly specialise in building space stations. I like building big uh, big space stations, preferably ones that move around. You can also uh, build rovers. You can build bases. You can build all sorts of good stuff. Um, the video I planned to make today was going to showcase some of that stuff. Uh, I I I have a base um, a base on the other moon, Minmus, and I have a. Uh, uh, a sort of rover that drives around collecting ore from the ground and then drives it to the base and the base can can take that ore and refine it into rocket fuel so a ship could land on the land near the base be refueled and take off again um, there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do um, people do really seriously absurd things with this game so I, I, I cannot recommend it highly enough honestly it, 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 it's just it's exactly like Lego um, but virtual with little green men and lots of explosions and you know there's going to be a couple of those in a second because my uh, my plane's engines are overheating here. Um, what we're going to try and do is see how far we can get for, for uh, Jebediah before they overheat, see how far my boy can uh, can get here. Um, and see if we can pull out to a dive and Oh boy, Jeb. Uh, well, that plane's pretty much toast, but uh, Jeb's got some. Jeb's got some some uh, tricks up his sleeve as well. So yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty bizarre game in a lot of ways, but it it, it allows you to do all sorts of things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to, to do and 
for me, my interest in space is mostly uh, kind of a cosmetic one. I, I, I think it's cool. I think the things we can do out there are cool. I think ideas like the Lunar Gateway and, uh, you know, the Curiosity Rover and the what's the next one? Perseverance Rover or the Coronavirus Rover, whatever the fuck we're going to be calling it now. Um, I think they're cool. I think it's a brilliant thing that we do. We can take a minivan and, and go land it on another planet. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, and this gives you a little slice of that. It gives you a little bit of a, a little bit of like, just a, a you know, it, get, it lets your imagination run a little bit wild. Uh, it lets you not pay attention when you're, uh, talking and steer your guy into the water <laughs> because you were meant to be landing in here um, for, for the effect but you know um, yeah it's a game I, I really recommend and, and, and it's and it's available it's, a, it's, it's available on Steam now so yeah go for it enjoy let's bring Jeb safely home um, ish anyway I've actually not played around with the, uh, the parachutes very much before. This is kind of good. This is a lot more steerable than I was expecting, honestly. Oh, that's pretty fast, huh? <laughs> oh, oh, Jeb. Oh, I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> oh, well. He doesn't mind. He's excited about the whole prospect. <laughs> 